Michael from Long Island. Who are your favorites for both the 2022 Men's Royal Rumble winner and Women's Royal Rumble winner? Well, Brock is coming back earlier than I expected, or else I would have gone with him for the men. Uh, for the Men's Rumble, I'm thinking Drew McIntyre, especially now that it looks like they may be running an angle where somebody in management has it in for the guy. You know, keeping him out of the Battle Royal on Friday. You know, Drew McIntyre went from the, the penthouse as the WWE champion to the outhouse real quick when his push fizzled out. Uh, if it's McIntyre and Roman Reigns or WrestleMania, then Drew wins the Men's Rumble. And on the women's side, if she can make it back in time, and ACL injuries are tricky because the recovery could be six months or it could be nine. Some people, it could be longer if there's complications. But if she can make it back by the end of January, then Bailey would be my pick to win. And if she's not ready to return, I would go with Rhea Ripley. You know, she came close this year. It was down to her and Bianca Belair, and Bianca got the win. Uh, Rhea has not been uh, much of a focal point on TV doing the whole tag team thing with Nikki Cross chasing after a fucking egg on TV last week. It's time to get her back in the mix. And what's great about Rhea winning is that either either champion works at WrestleMania. A match with Becky would be great. It's one we haven't seen before. And a match with Charlotte, you know, that's never really worked out real well in the past for, for uh, Rhea Ripley. But if she finally wins, then that wraps that story up the right way. She takes the championship from Charlotte Flair. Now, I, I had also thought about Naomi. And I'm not really big on Naomi winning the Royal Rumble. I, I would rather go with Rhea. But the Naomi thing could work too. If the payoff to all of this Naomi stuff with her and Sonya Deville. And Sonya, you know, does not obviously want this woman to be wrestling for a championship anytime soon. Then maybe the only way Naomi could get herself in the mix is to win the Royal Rumble. And maybe that's the payoff to this. Maybe the payoff to her being held down by Sonya Deville on TV is that she wins the Women's Royal Rumble match. Maybe she even eliminates Sonya to do it. But, you know, ba not Bailey, uh, Naomi winning the Rumble and challenging Charlotte at WrestleMania or, or Becky. The story-wise, the story is there, but to me it's just not the marquee match I would do at WrestleMania. If anything, I'd rather see her get her get her revenge on Sonya one on one at WrestleMania. It doesn't even have to be for a championship. I think Rhea Ripley against Becky Lynch, or Rhea Ripley finally you know winning the title from Charlotte Flair, that to me could be the main event for night one of WrestleMania. If you want to headline WrestleMania night one with a women's match again like they did this year with Sasha and Bianca, and that was a great match. You could do that with Rhea Ripley against either of those women. I don't see the same marquee value in having Naomi uh, in the women's main event of WrestleMania. I just don't see it. But story-wise, if they wanted to pay it off with a Naomi Rumble win, I, I could see that too. Uh, Faisal from Kuwait. I remember you mentioned during a recent mailbag that CM Punk should be the one to dethrone MJF, provided that MJF beats Hangman for the belt. Uh, so he's saying that, uh, Punk should be the one to dethrone MJF for the AEW championship. But do you think Eddie Kingston should get the nod instead, especially after the reaction he got during his brief feud with Punk, as well as the widespread support he received for his Players Online article? That was the, uh, the Players Tribune piece. He says, I feel there might be a stronger story with Eddie, a man who had to fight for everything he's got, beating the privileged rich kid from Plainview, Long Island, even if he only holds the title for a month. I don't see Eddie Kingston as the AEW champion. I, I think Eddie Kingston going for the TNT title and winning the TNT championship is much more likely. I just don't see the point in putting the title on Eddie Kingston just for the one moment and then, oh, you know, a month later you could take it off of him. I mean, you could. That's not really AEW's MO when it comes to crowning their world champions. So I see Kingston more at the TNT title level. I, I don't see him uh, winning the AEW championship, and it's it's not something that I would do. Mark is from Dallas. My question is about the Money in the Bank match. It may be too early to think about WrestleMania, but given that every year WWE tries to get as many people onto the Mania card as possible, 
do you think they should move the Money in the Bank match back to WrestleMania like it was before they created a pay-per-view for it? Or do you prefer having a dedicated event for the match? No, I prefer having it at WrestleMania, but it's never going to happen. Money in the Bank has o long overtaken Survivor Series as one of the big four shows of the year. Money in the Bank is in a stadium next year. They're going to try to put 50,000 people in a stadium in July, July 4th weekend, for a Money in the Bank pay-per-view. So Money in the Bank will never again go back to WrestleMania. Do I prefer it on the WrestleMania card? I do. It would be more challenging now, though. And this is one of the one of the logistical reasons why it just it, it, it can't happen. You have one for the men. You have one for the women. Having two Money in the Bank matches on the WrestleMania card is, is a bit much. Now, they have two nights of WrestleMania. So that if, if that becomes the norm every year going forward, if they just say, okay, we're just going to do two nights every year, you could have a Money in the Bank match on each night. That could work. That could be a draw. You want to sell tickets to the same stadium two nights in a row? You give the audience on both nights each a Money in the Bank match. One for the men, one for the women. That could work. So uh, from a personal perspective, as a, a personal preference, yes, I would rather Money in the Bank go back to being a an attraction at WrestleMania. I don't think it needs its own dedicated show, but the, the horse is out of the barn. And it is one of their bigger events of the year, so... There's no reason for them to uh, change from that formula. I'd rather them get rid of Hell in a Cell and TLC as uh, standalone shows before they ever do anything to Money in the Bank. Sebastian from Bedford, UK. Do you think a Stephanie McMahon-Becky Lynch feud could make for a compelling television uh, story in 2022? And if so, how would you like to see it booked? I wouldn't. I don't find any McMahons on my television to be compelling anymore. We have had 25 years, off and on, of a McMahon power trip on TV. Be it with Vince, with Shane, with Stephanie, Triple H, the uh, the honorary McMahon. So there was a compelling story to tell when Shane came back with him and Triple H, and they didn't do it. I don't need to see Stephanie feuding with anybody on television. And if she was going to give the rub to somebody by, by sharing TV time with them and uh, slapping them around, it would, you know, doing it with somebody established like Becky doesn't make any sense. You would do it with somebody new. Who, in their mind, they would be trying to get over, but of course it would probably have the opposite effect. And Stephanie would slap them around about uh, 16,000 times. So no, I have no interest in seeing that. Dan from Niagara Falls, New York. Who do you see having a brighter future? Sammy Guevara or Austin Theory? Austin Theory. I think both will go on to be uh, to be big stars, but I think Austin Theory is... Uh, I think Austin Theory is going to go a lot higher than Sammy Guevara is. Uh, Joseph from Silsby, Texas. Which superstar had the more promising future and could have been a key player in WWE if they did not have a career-ending injury? Tyson Kidd or Jason Jordan? Jason Jordan. Tyson Kidd was only going to get over at a certain level. He was never, he was never ever going to be booked as any kind of top player in the company. I think he would have gone on to uh, hold many more tag team titles. You know, him and Cesaro could have been a great tag team for a long time. Uh, he may have gone on to do other stuff in the tag team division. Maybe he would have had a run in, in the mid card, you know, as a, a single star. Maybe. But that's as far as it would have gone for him. Jason Jordan was already being pushed at a top level before he got hurt. I think at the time he was a Raw tag team champion with Seth Rollins. Seth was one of the biggest stars in the company at the time. Uh, he was young. He had the uh, athletic background, great wrestler. Jason Jordan was going places if he didn't get hurt. Tyson Kidd wasn't going places the way Jason Jordan was. So Jason Jordan, by far, I think, would have been more of a key player in that company as far as on the card than Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd could have and, and, and is contributing in a big way behind the scenes. He works with the women a lot. 
Uh, Jason Jordan does too, by the way. He works behind the scenes now for them as an agent as well. But uh, of the two, it, it was definitely Jordan with the higher ceiling. Jason from the Bronx, do you find yourself using any wrestler sayings or phrases in your everyday life? Whenever my friends try to get me to do something I don't want to do, I often say, that doesn't work for me, brother, in the Hulkster voice. I do it too. <laughs> that don't work for me, brother, in the Hogan voice. I, actually, I do that a lot, actually. Um, I find myself saying the bottom line a lot. I don't know if I should blame Steve Austin for that or, or not. But uh, I will sometimes say, and that's the bottom line, or that's the bottom line. I've also used Bobby Heenan's old saying whenever a friend annoys me and asks me for a favor. A friend in need is a pest. If they're not a wrestling fan, they probably would get very offended by that and not get the joke, but that's okay. And Alberto from Laredo, Texas. Can you tell us about your very first wrestling show you ever went to in person? I can. It was the day after Christmas, my father's birthday, in 1987, Madison Square Garden. I don't remember much about the show other than the main event. Uh, main event was the Macho Man challenging the Honky Tonk Man for the Intercontinental title. So my first live main event was an Intercontinental Championship match. Uh, Jimmy Hart was suspended above the ring in a shark cage. I remember, you know, watching him screaming and crying as they lifted him slowly into the air and i'm afraid of heights you know i'm i'm obviously a young fan at that point i'm watching this and i'm thinking man this guy's gonna fall he's gonna get hurt i was scared to death for him i remember that i remember the fear of watching him be lifted into the air so that was my first live wrestling event way way back the year that hogan slammed andre in 87, that was the first show I ever went to at MSG. 